everybody, it's Dr. Rick dropping in on you. Hope everybody's had a good day. I hope you're having a great week to this point. Uh, you know my approach to life. If you're still breathing, you're still in the fight. So no matter where you're at right now, specifically in your journey, if you're still breathing, there's a reason for hope. There's a reason uh, to get up and keep pushing and do what hasn't been done yet. So don't you dare quit. Don't you dare give up. Um, I'm going to be as brief as I can in saying what I have to say now. I'm going to be as blunt uh, as necessary uh, to get my point across. Uh, you know me. Uh, I've said this from day one. We are almost 15 years in and I've been saying this since day one. I'm not here for popularity. I'm not here to be liked. Uh, while I appreciate the shares and the comments and the likes, that's not why I'm here. The shares help other people get the information that I share and hopefully uh, the dissemination of that information helps people make good decisions that advances them in the uh, process of growing and becoming impactful and powerful uh, in a society that is inherently hostile towards them. That is my hope. But I will not play nice to be liked. I will not uh, feed, spoon feed BS to be liked. Uh, I'm going to call a spade a spade, but I'm going to do it in love. I, I, I'm never going to do it with the purpose of insulting or degrading someone, but I'm going to call it like it is, and I'm going to be brutally honest at times. Uh, and most times, you guys know, I am very, very uh, balanced and level in how I deal with things. I'm not out here for shock value. While that definitely gets your numbers up and increases revenue on these different platforms, that's not how I chose to play the game. Uh, my thing is... While I'm not out here to be liked, I do plan on being respected. Um, and respect has to be earned, and it's earned by being considerate of others. So that's that. Before I get started, I'm going to also remind you that we do need your support. I've been saying that um, for a while now. Look inside the description box if you believe in what we've done uh, over the years. Like I say, this isn't new to me. I've been doing this for a while, and it's not just what I do online. It's the work I actually do in the community. Um, look in the description box and look at ways that you can support us and show some support, show some love. Now, I am just flabbergasted nice word from where I really freaking feel at how we are as a culture. We will get together as a race of people and counsel anybody who says anything that might actually call us to a new level, a new standard, a new way of carrying ourselves, a new way of performing, a new way of being, whether it's how we spend our money, where it's how we dress, where it's how we move and operate together. Anyway, we don't want to be corrected. We don't want anybody to challenge us. We don't want anybody to disrupt, disrupt our uh, false utopia because we don't have a real true one. We're getting our asses molly wafted and hand to us. So we don't have a utopia, but we've definitely learned to be the great pretenders in our society. And we, we pretend we've made it. We pretend we've got power. We pretend we have influence within the political arena. We pretend, we pretend, we pretend. And then we'll do all of that damn canceling of our own people. The people who look like us, we'll cancel the hell out of them in a heartbeat. And then we'll turn around and pour our vote, our vote of confidence, our vote of validation, our vote of hope into politicians who have proven their disdain for us, proven. I'll give you a fine example, Joe Biden. Nobody, maybe it's just me, but nobody finds it ironic 
that the guy who wrote the crime bill that was heavily weighted on drugs has drugs found in the White House. Drugs and the White House is a trap house now. And based on a lot of research and study and looking into it, it is highly likely that this man's son is the person who brought that shit in there. But 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 it isn't just this guy wrote the crime bill. Bunch of people, a bunch of black people, more black people disproportionately impacted by that crime bill than anybody else because it gave greater sentences to crack cocaine, which is a cheaper form of cocaine that is predominantly in poor neighborhoods. Blacks are at predominantly at the poverty line and sent them to prison for years. The same uh, crime bill gave lesser sentences for powder cocaine. Cocaine used predominantly by more affluent whites. That shit was, and it's not just that. I mean, it's across the board. That crime bill was horrible. But that, the crime bill wasn't his one misstep. The crime bill was his crowning moment of constant encroachment upon the freedoms of blacks. This is the same Joe Biden that in the 70s blocked 60s and 70s blocked busing to school for blacks to, that would have bused them to more uh, affluent schools where funding was uh, more readily available and better uh, educational opportunities were available. He blocked it and he blocked it by saying doing uh, allowing the busing of blacks into white schools would create a jungle and he don't want his kids living in a jungle. This is the same Joe Biden. Oh, he can't possibly be racist because he's a Democrat. The shit we fall for. Look, I've been telling you for years. The left wing and the right wing belong to the same bird. They function in different ways, but the goal is to get the bird to the destination. And that is as simple as it gets in the explanation. I'm not going to go into that part. I'm going to get back to Biden. So now here's the thing. My issue isn't even in the fact that Biden's administration and family is more is likely to have cocaine in the house now it's ironic because that's the very thing that's got a bunch of my people locked up doing decades behind stuff that white people now from the heroin epidemic are getting treatment from because now it's an illness we got jailed for our addictions they are getting treatment. They are getting subsidies. They are getting financial funding to help them with their problems. Under what administration? The same administration. The administration of the person who's the same person who screwed us in the first place. But here's the thing. That's not what has me. You know what has me? The fact that black people are quiet and the mosquitoes pissing on cotton while it happens. If that would have been Trump, and no, I'm not a fan, Republicans, Democrats, Trump, I'm, I'm, I'm none of that. I'm about finding our own place, creating our own space, fighting. If we need to create new parties, we need to create them. We have to understand the two-party system was never meant to help us. You got to do, I've written two wonderful pieces on the two-party system. Uh, you need to go to the Odyssey Project site and check them out. Look, let me tell you something. That system wasn't designed for us. It's never going to work for us because it was designed. It was designed to actually keep us in check. You got to understand. You got to go all the way back to Reconstruction. When you really study Reconstruction, what you actually find out is the South didn't lose the war. The Confederates didn't lose the war. They stopped fighting under the Confederate flag and started fighting through covert and um, 
covert and guerrilla warfare. They started bombing military installations. They started setting them on fire. They started killing and destroying property until the Union Army withdrew their installations from the South and went back to the North and left the South to itself. And it reconstructed the antebellum South with one exception. Slavery was no longer called slavery. It was called convict leasing. They instituted black codes. Why do you think we had to have a civil rights act for voting when we actually had voting rights uh, from the 13th Amendment? Nobody asked those questions because most of us don't even realize it. We had rights to vote. Nah, you want to, you, if you want to risk your life and actually use that right, that's a whole other thing. But that was, again, that was a part of returning the South to its antebellum roots of white superiority, white wealth, and controlling and marginalizing black advancement. So the first thing that happens during the 12 years of reconstruction is the, the union removes itself. Uh, the Confederate states are now operating and creating codes. The black codes controlled what blacks could own, where blacks could work. And then the, uh, the statutes and laws like uh, the vagrancy laws, which that made vagrancy a freaking felony, now says that you can't be homeless and you can't be jobless. You just got kicked off the plantation. So now they are jailing blacks up to 12 years for being unemployed and homeless and then leasing them back to the very plantations and railroad companies and corporations that they had been freed from to work for what? Free. Now the state was getting pennies on the dollar from what they would have been paid if they would have actually been hired the way they should have been. Then in other areas where we had the skills because we had did it for the last couple of hundred years, they outlawed us from even taking those jobs. Why? because it would have put whites out of work. So we can go on and on and on about how this thing plays out. It wasn't built for us. So then we can't expect it to work for us. And we've got to stop looking at it. My whole thing is when I look at this whole thing, and I, I didn't say anything about it. I didn't say anything about uh, this whole cocaine in the White House things outside maybe a joke or something like that out there. But I just want to see the response. That would have been Trump. That would have been all kind of means with Trump with cocaine on his nose, all this shit like that. Because we've been programmed what? Republicans are racist. Trump is the worst racist of them all. And Democrats are God. And despite the fact that if you actually go back and you study our progression since the Civil Rights Act, where we 60 years we voted, we turned out. Uh, in increasing numbers every presidential cycle except one and we have voted in uh, I mean religiously 90% or higher for Democrats and we've actually got nothing in return matter of fact we've lost we've lost certain victories we won in the 60s as far as rights are concerned under Democratic um, administrations the crime bill Democratic administration We have got to understand that we've gained no ground no matter what po political party is in office. We've gained no political ground whatsoever. I mean, no economic ground, no social ground, no ground. We've been given the illusion that we're doing better because what do they do? They parade the exceptions in front of us, the anomalies in front of us to say they made it. Why haven't you made it? They don't talk about all of the different mechanisms and mechanisms, mechanisms that are in play, mechanisms that are in play that interrupt our efforts or hide our opportunities. They don't talk about that. They show us the few that's made it and they make it seem like blacks are doing so great. No, actually, we have declined. The wealth gap is widening. The median income for black men is 44,000. The median income for black women is 42,000. They have changed a little bit since the last I checked it, but that should be pretty much where we're at. We are at the borders of poverty as a collective.
And because we like to pretend, we give the illusion, we got a bunch of people that give the illusion that this is the life that all blacks are living when the truth of the matter, the vast majority of blacks aren't living in uh, the spaces we live in. We are going to have to shift our thinking. We're going to have to really reevaluate our mindsets and how we move, how we think, how we operate, how we carry ourselves, and so much more. We will literally fight for the right to move shady, fight for the right to behave uh, in a grimy way, fight for the right to present ourselves in a way that won't be respected, fight for, we'll fight for all that, but we won't fight for power. We won't fight for protection. We won't fight to build something that's ours. We simply wanna move around, point the finger of blame, take the responsibility off ourselves, and then operate in a way that is non-conducive to true empowerment. The time is up for that. On that note, I'm gonna get ready to get out of here, but we have got to do better. Uh, again, if you believe in the work that we're doing at the Odyssey Project with our research center, our think tank, our wraparound services for mental health, domestic violence, uh, uh, our uh, Black Men Lead Rite of Passage initiative, and so much more. We're going to ask that you show some love, show some support, and donate. On that note, I'm out of here. You guys have an unbelievable remainder 